Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson four of learning C++ by making games. In this video, we will do our initial output in our game. However, first we have to go over a few things. This video has been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Nemian Games. In this video, we will go over keywords, briefly discuss headers, briefly talk about the main function, we'll do our coding for the initial output, and I'll provide the solution to the challenges from the last video. So that said, if you're already familiar with what main function are, headers, all that stuff, go to the timestamps in the description and jump straight to coding the initial input. So what are keywords? Keywords are those things that are already defined by the compiler in C++ and other languages use them as well. They're reserved and cannot be redefined. Now, technically there are ways to get around that and they can be redefined, but don't worry about that right now. And here's a list of all the keywords in C++. C++ has more keywords than the typical computer programming language. However, you do not need to know all of them. So headers, and this is gonna be a very rough and brief description. There's gonna be some nuance I won't cover in this video, but we will get to in later videos. Headers are files that contain definitions for functions and variables. Again, don't worry about what functions and variables are. We'll talk more about variables in the next video. We'll talk a little bit about functions in a moment, but mostly we'll discuss this in greater detail when we do Hangman. All you need to know is that functions do a particular task. And the one header we're going to use right now is known as IOStream. And what IOStream does is it has functions related to input and output, for example. So you don't have to redefine what the H key or T or G key on your keyboard are. They're already defined in IOStream. All the input and output code is there, so we don't have to rewrite how to display text on a screen every time we write a new program. You will see, especially if you click the links down below, references to things called libraries. Now, libraries allow you to find a list of functions for various headers or within headers. Or better put, a header is an email address. A library is the person you can reach at that address. And that's all you really need to know about headers for now. And we're only going to be using one in this video. We will use other headers in later videos. And I will link to sites that have details on what functions are in those headers. As for main, main is a function. And again, a function is just something that runs code. Now, every C++ program needs to have a main function somewhere in the code. And the reason for that is... It is the function that is primarily run, and when that function ends, so when main completes, the program also ends. All right, all of that said, open up your code, and let's get started working on our initial output for our game. All right, so here we are back inside the editor, and what we're going to do is we're going to, if we pop open our pseudo code here, we're going to do this part here. Now I'm going to change the wording just slightly. So scroll down to our main. And you see we have the IO stream here. So it's, that's the header I was talking about earlier. So this is a, is a header. And this header allows us to do this. Send something out. So C out allows us to send text onto the console screen. The STD here stands for standard, and it is part of the standard library in IO stream. This is the main function that I was talking about earlier in the video. And before we change the text, I just want to add one line, and that line is going to be return zero with a semicolon at the end. All statements, so any command like this or like this, has to end with a semicolon. This is like a full stop in a sentence. What return zero does is tells the system that this program or this function, the main function has terminated successfully. So let's just delete this hello world and let's get practice writing in our STD for standard 
two colons, C out, carrot, carrot, and the carrots have to face towards the C out, or the pointy ends towards the C out. And we're gonna type in whatever we want our initial prompt to be. Like I said, I'm gonna change it from guess a number. And it's going to be, hey, let's play a game. Guess what my favorite number is. Go on, comma, guess. And then at the end of this, I'm gonna put two more carrots, STD for standard, and then I'm gonna type in end L with a semicolon. And I missed one of my semicolons there. And what end L stands for is end line. So the next bit of text that will show up will be on the next line. Alternatively to using end line, you can use slash n in this text. And this will drop it down a line as well. Now, you might see some code where you just see C out and end line without the STD in front of it. And what that is, is if you look at the top, just under the header, you will see a word called the namespace. That's one of our reserved words. Then you would see a particular set of letters, and those letters are ones that would show up in here. So if you see namespace STD, anything that uses the standard library would no longer need this STD. I will not be doing that in this tutorial, as I think it's good form to know which libraries you are pulling your information from. Also, there are links in the description about the various libraries. But now that we've done this, let's make sure this works. Let's make sure there are no bugs. So we're gonna hit our local Windows debugger up here and hit play on that. It's gonna compile our code and then we'll get the line, hey, let's play a game. Guess what my favorite number is? And this is telling us that it's terminated and that it's stopped and we can close the window. So that takes us through what we need to do in this video. In the next video, we'll cover our variables, what they are, and how to get that guess from the player. Now, for those of you who did the pseudocode challenges from last week, let's take a quick look at what the solutions are. So here's our solution to creating a program that gets a person's name, age, and favorite color. So all you have to do is have variables for name, age, favorite color. And you ask, what is their name? Get name. How old are you? Get age. Now, there's a typo in that, actually. That should be a capital A, because that should match what's up there. And then we have, what is your favorite color? And get favorite color. So if you wanted to actually code this out, you can now do this line, this line, and this line. In the next video, you should be able to do the rest of this. All right, that one was pretty simple. Now, the omelet one was rather complex, and I... Um, think a flowchart would have been a better way to pseudocode this than actually using pseudocode. So in our pseudocode for the omelet, I just want to point out I haven't declared all the variables because it would just take ages to declare everything. And I've used a, I was thinking about this as a particular type of variable when I have ingredients and cooking utensils that are technically more complex than our, you know, favorite number or simple integers or simple other things like that. So don't worry about this. This is just a list of ingredients and a list of utensils. So our ingredients can include, you know, egg, cheese, um, mushroom, onion, what have you. Our cooking utensils could include our pan, our stove, etc., etc., our spatula. So the first thing we need to do then is prepare our eggs. So we get from our ingredients our eggs. We get from our cooking utensils a bowl. We crack the egg into the bowl, pour the content to the bowl, and while they're not scrambled, we stir. And then we check if, uh, if they're scrambled, set to scrambled. So we drop out of this loop, this while loop, and we go on to the next step, which is to prepare the stove. We set the heat to high. We get from the cooking utensils a pan. We put the pan on stove. We set, the we set a timer for 60 seconds. And while the timer is greater than zero, so while this is still counting down, we do nothing. So this is where the pan is heating up on the stove. Once we've hit 60 seconds, we're going to drop out of this loop and we will set the heat to low. I don't sure why I have an and there. Sorry about that. Then we need to cook our omelet. So we're going to pour the contents of the bowl, which is now our scrambled egg, into the pan. And then we're going to have a variable, which I haven't declared, that says if the sides are cooked or not. So while both sides are uncooked, we're gonna set a timer for three minutes. 
While the timer is greater than zero, we're going to go through a what's known as nested conditional checks or a nested loop. We have this first loop that while it's greater than zero, we're going to do something. While it's greater than 60, we are going to, actually that should be less than 60, we are going to check if one side is cooked. If one side is cooked, so we've already cooked one side, we're going to add cheese and continue to cook. If neither sides are cooked, we're just going to continue to cook. So this is a little bit backwards from what we would actually do in real life. So we're going to, you know, cook the first side, flip it, which is down here, and then cook the other side. So if one side is not cooked, or sorry, if both sides are not cooked, we'll continue to cook. We're going to, actually, we're going to change that to while timer is equal to 60 seconds. That will make a little bit more sense. So at 60 seconds, we do this check. Then we drop out of the loop because we've gone past that and we have both sides uncooked. Once this gets to zero, we're going to set one side to cook. We're going to fail this condition because one side is not cooked right now. Actually, that should be if neither side is cooked or one side is cooked. See, a little bit of these mistakes are going to come up. It happens. So if neither side is cooked or one side is cooked, we're going to flip the eggs and we're going to increment sides cooked. We come back through here. We're going to still be in this timer. And while we're greater than zero, we're going to check when we're equal to 60, one side is now cooked. So we add the cheese, keep cooking. We've only got one side cooked. Actually, it will be if one side is cooked. And then we and then we go down to this next one, this else, because now we have one side cooked. Or sorry, now we have both sides cooked. And because we failed out of this, we're going to go here. And we're going to set both sides to cooked, plate it, and turn off the stove. We can even have this in this part of the loop while both sides are uncooked. Because we now have technically fallen out of that, and that could be a little bit further over. But the check can occur in either right when it happens or right after we fall out of the loop. So there are a couple of places where you could have placed that. So that takes us through the pseudocode. And again, there are other ways to do this. It was just an example. And the idea is just to make sure you have roughly the same idea of the steps and the checks you need to do. And again, you might make a little mistakes. You notice I did. This is actually a rather complex one, as I said. So again, we have this check here. We're going to check. Well, in a later iteration, we're going to check, is the guess greater than a particular number? So this random 1 to 10. Is it greater than 10? Then you're going to put out an error. If it's less than 1, you're going to put out an error as well. So we'll be updating our pseudocode. And it's good to get comfortable with the idea that you can have conditions within conditions. So think about like a branching story. If you can figure out how to outline your program, then you are well on your way to becoming a programmer. All right, that said, we've done everything we need to do in this video. In the next video, I'll go over what variables are. The video after that, how to declare variables. And in the third video, we'll actually declare our guest number. And then we'll get our guest number and or declare our guest number and then get it. So we'll talk about what declarations and initialization of variables are as well. Now remember, all those three videos will release in one go. That said, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button down below. And if you want to be here when we cover what variables are or continue with programming our game, make sure to hit that subscribe and notify icon. And if you want to help the channel out further, consider becoming a supporter on Patreon. All of that said, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial. And I hope that you have a wonderful day.